Hi, my name is Milan and in this video I'll show you how to create a JSON Web Tokens for users that authenticate with your system. You can use a JSON Web Token to enforce authentication and authorization on your API and they are particularly useful in microservices systems. Before we dive into generating JWTs in ASP.NET Core, let's spend a brief moment discussing what is a JSON Web Token. The common abbreviation is JWT, and some people even pronounce this as JWT, but what this stands for is JSON Web Token. And another way to represent a JSON Web Token is as a string with three distinct components. The first one in red is called a header, and this contains information about which algorithm was used to encrypt the token. Then you have your payload in purple, which is usually the part that you are most interested in. It contains the issuer, the audience, the subject, which is the identifier of the user that obtained this token. And then you have the signature in blue, which allows you to verify that the JSON web token that was provided to your API is also the one that was created by your system. This is how you can enforce authentication with JSON web tokens. Now, we are also going to mention authorization and how you could go about that, but first, let's start by generating a JSON web token. We want to create a JSON web token in the login user use case. Instead of returning the user here, we want to return a JSON web token as a string value, and then the user can use this to authenticate with our API. I'm going to start by installing a NuGet package that allows me to work with JSON web tokens. I'm going to look for JWT bearer, and this NuGet package is called Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JWT bearer. Let's go ahead and install the latest version. And then I'm going to create an abstraction in the user's infrastructure folder, which I will call the token provider. And this is where I'm going to implement the logic for creating a JSON web token. The only dependency I need here is the iConfiguration service. That's going to allow me to obtain my application settings. An alternative could be using the options pattern and providing a strongly typed options object. I want to keep things simple, so let's go the I configuration route. I'm going to expose a create method that accepts a user, and we're going to create a JSON web token for this user instance. The first thing we're going to need is a secret key value. And we are going to use this to sign the JSON web token. So this is some sensitive information that you do not want to expose in any way inside of your application. A safe way to provide this is using environment variables. You can also provide it through a secrets manager. I'm going to be using user secrets in this example. So let's go ahead and create a user secret with this value on the CalConnect API. I'm going to click manage user secrets and now I can provide the secret value. Ideally, this should be something entirely random, and you also want to make it relatively long for maximum safety. I'm just going to use a dummy value, but what you could do is generate a UUID and then encode it as a base64 string, for example. With our user secret in place, let's go back to the token provider, and what we want to do is to create a new security key. I'm going to use a symmetric security key, and the argument for this constructor is an array of bytes. So what I'm going to do is say, encoding utf8 get bytes and i'm going to specify my secret key which is a string value let's assume that this value will never be null so i'm going to specify a null forgiving operator but this is going to throw an exception either way so that's also fine then we want to create our signing credentials by calling new signing credentials and this accepts a security key, which we already have, and the algorithm is going to be used to sign this JSON web token. I'm going to use hmacsha256. Now I'm going to create a token descriptor, which is going to allow me to provide some claims for my token. So let's create a new security token descriptor. And this is going to allow me to provide some values, such as the subject, which is a claims identity instance. So let's create a new claims identity, and I'm going to provide an array of claims for this claims identity instance. The first claim is going to be the JWT registered claim names, and I'm going to use the subclaim. And what I want to set as the value of this claim is the user's identifier. Of course, I have to convert this into a string. One more thing I could do is use the email claim, and I can provide the user's email. Another thing that could be interesting is if the email is verified or not. So let's specify an email verified claim, and the value is going to be the user 
email verified property and we have to specify to string. Then you can configure the expiration time of your JSON web token. So I can use UTC now and let's for example add 60 minutes to the current value. So our token expires in 60 minutes. You will probably want to configure this through your application settings. So you can go ahead and say configuration get value and obtain some integer value which could be JWT expiration in minutes. Then you can provide your signing credentials, which we already have in the credentials variable. And then you can provide an issuer, which is also going to come from your application settings. So I'll say configuration JWT issuer. And then let's provide the audience, which I'm also going to pull from my application settings. So finally, once we have our token descriptor, we need to create our JSON web token handler. So let's create a new JSON web token handler. And there are a few services that you can use here. Another common one is the JWT security token handler, which you can also use to create a JSON web token. However, the recommended way is using the JSON web token handler. And it's also up to 30% faster than the other alternatives. So now I can create a token by saying handler create token. And this is already going to return a string. And I just need to pass in a token descriptor. So now that I have my JSON web token, I can go ahead and return it from the service. Now we can use the token provider from the login user use case. So let's go ahead and inject it. And I'm going to update this use case to return a string instead of a user. And now I'm going to create a token by using the token provider create method, which accepts a user argument. So now I can return this token from the login user use case. Now, the only thing that's left is to register my token provider as a service. So let's say builder services at singleton and I will specify the token provider. Now let's go ahead and provide our application settings for the JSON web token setup. So this is the base settings and I'm going to provide the actual values inside of my development settings file. I'm providing the secret through my user secrets. Now the issuer is going to be CalConnect, which is our application. Let's say the audience's account and the expiration time in minutes is going to be an integer and let's specify the value of 60. And now we should be ready to start our application and attempt to log in a user to obtain a JSON web token. I'm going to open up the Swagger UI and I'm going to call the login endpoint for a user that I already registered and verify their email address. So if I send this request, we're going to land in the login user use case where we will first fetch the user from the database, verify their password hash, and if all of that succeeds, then we're going to create a JSON web token for this user. Now we're going to pull the secret key from our user secrets. In production, this could be an environment variable, or we could even pull this from a secrets manager. The next step is going to be creating the signing credentials, the token descriptor, a JSON web token handler. And finally, with everything in place, we can go ahead and produce a JSON web token. So let's go ahead and return this from our use case and we can copy this value here. And then I will head over to jwt.io where I can paste my JSON web token and we can examine what we have inside. So you can see in the header which algorithm was used to sign this token. In the payload, here is our subject claim, which matches our user's identifier. Then we have the user's email, if the email was verified or not, who is the correct issuer audience, and when this token expires, which is 60 minutes from the time of obtaining the token. So this is just part of the equation. The next thing that we need is to actually enforce authentication based on this JSON web tokens properties. So let me show you how we are going to do this. I'm going to say builder services add authentication, and then I'm going to specify my authentication scheme. I can use JWT bearer default to specify the bearer authentication scheme. And then I'm going to say add JWT bearer. This allows me to provide an action on the JWT bearer options type. Alternatively, you can manage this through application settings, but let's do this in our code. And here you can configure how your JSON web token is going to be validated. I'm going to set false for require HTTPS metadata. Then I'm going to set the token validation parameters by providing a new token validation parameters instance. And here I want to set a few properties. One of them is going to be the issuer signing key. You need to create a new symmetric security key. And we're going to obtain this by saying encoding UTF-8 get bytes. And then I need to access the configuration value by saying builder configuration JWT secret. Then I need to provide the valid issuer. This is going to come from builder configuration. JWT 
issuer, we can do the same for the valid audience by saying builder configuration JWT audience. And finally, I want to configure the clock skew, which is how much tolerance we want to have based on the expiration value of our JSON web token. I'm going to specify time span of zero, which means that we don't tolerate any token where the expiration time is in the past. I'm also going to add authorization services by saying builder services add authorization. And we also need to include some middleware into our request pipeline. So I'm going to say app use authentication, and then I'm going to say app use authorization in this particular order. And this is how we can enable authentication and authorization in our API. And the next thing that's left to do is to actually use this. So let's go to the user endpoints and let's add authentication to the get user endpoint. So I'm going to say require authorization. And what this is going to do under the hood, if I go into the source code, is it's going to add an authorized attribute to this particular endpoint. This is going to apply the default authorization policy, and the default authorization policy only requires for the current user to be authenticated. So let's try to explain what is the difference between authentication and authorization. Authentication is just figuring out who is the current user and if they are the user of this system. Authorization is determining what this user is allowed to do. Now we can implement authorization by specifying some additional claims inside of our JSON web token, which we can do here. And typically you would do this through roles or even permissions for more granular control. I won't be doing this as part of this video, but it should be simple enough to just include the relevant roles as additional claims on the JSON web token. What this allows you to do in the user endpoints is to specify these roles as additional policies. So for example, we may have a registered role. So we are going to specify it here. If we had some different roles, we can also pass them in. And essentially you can achieve the same thing by saying with metadata and specifying an authorization attribute. The authorization attribute also accepts a policy. And if you want to use roles, you can pass them in using a comma separated string. So let's say I want to allow this endpoint for registered users and admin users for whatever reason. This is how I would be able to do it. So let's go with the minimal APIs approach, which is require authorization. And as I mentioned, this is just going to require for the current user to be authenticated. And before we test this out, I want to show you a bonus implementation detail, and this will be how to integrate JSON Web Token authentication with the Swagger user interface. So let's create another class in the extensions folder that I will call service collection extensions. I'm going to make this an internal and static type because it's going to contain extension methods. And then let's create an internal and static method returning an I service collection. I will call it add swagger gen with off and it's going to be an extension method on the service collection interface. Inside of this method, I'm going to say add swagger gen and let's take the piece of code that we already have, which is setting up our custom scheme IDs and instead of that, let's call add swagger gen with off. Now let's go back to our extension method. We want to add this piece of code back, but I'm also going to introduce an open API security scheme object. This is how I'm going to define a new security definition for my swagger gen document. And I'm going to provide this security definition for the bearer scheme, which I can obtain from JWT bearer defaults. And there's an authentication scheme constant. And one more thing we need to do is to create an open API security requirement where we need to provide an open API security scheme. And essentially we want to reference the bearer scheme again. I'm going to add the security requirement using the respective method. And this will be enough to configure JSON web token authentication through the Swagger user interface. Now let's start our application and let me show you how this works. One change that you can see here is the presence of the authorized icon. If I click this icon, it's going to open up a pop-up where I can provide the JSON web token value and authorize with my API. Now let's try to fetch the user based on their identifier. And I pull this value from the subject claim on the JSON web token. And if I send this, I will get back a 401 unauthorized response. Now let's try logging in by specifying milan at calconnect.com, which are my email and password. And if I execute this, we should get back a JSON web token. So I'm going to copy this value and you can also provide this from the lock icon on the endpoint. I'm going to paste in the JSON web token value and click authorize. And now we are logged in. So we can close this down. And if I send this request, 
we will get back the user because we are correctly authenticated with our API using our JSON web token. So this is how you can generate a JSON web token using the JSON web token handler type. You can extend this to add more claims for implementing authorization. This could be roles and permissions, and this allows you to implement granular control inside of your system. If you don't want to implement everything yourself, you can always use a robust identity provider, and Keycloak is a great option, so you should watch this video next to learn more about Keycloak, check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your skills, and until next time, stay awesome.